So, the anticipation has been mounting. The excitement sometimes has been too hard to bear. But due to popular demand, he has arrived, everybody. Very popular man on this show. A warm welcome and big hugs because he's sitting in a different studio to our dream expert, Ian Wallace. Welcome, Ian. Thank you, Sonia, for that lovely introduction and big hugs back at you. Got them. Thank you. <laughs> Deservedly so, Ian. Always a popular man when you come on this show. Uh-huh. Thank you. And uh, did you get any sleep last night when you realised you are coming on today? I had a fantastic sleep, Sonia. It was very, very good. Lots of really good dreams, so uh, that just made it even more exciting. What's it like for a dream expert to have dreams and wake up in the morning and know what they must mean? It's a really fascinating question, Sonia, because the the thing about dreams is that they come from parts of ourselves quite often that we're not aware of or we need to explore more. So quite often when I wake up and I'm just running backwards through my dreams and just reviewing them, I think, what on earth was going on there? And then just start to work through it and see what's happening in my waking life that's making me create that particular dream. So are you ready to break down our listeners' dreams on the show today. I'm all set. And ready to go. (laughs) I'm going to give out the contact numbers then, Ian. Okay. If I have your permission. You have my permission, Sonia. (laughs) Here's the number to call. 08459 440 445. If you've had a certain dream and it's bugging you and you want to know what it means... Maybe it's a reoccurring dream and you don't know why you keep having the same dream. Or maybe it's something you had recently and, I don't know, there were certain things in the dream and you want to know, what is the message? What What is this dream trying to tell me? 08459 440 445 is the number to call. You can text us on 81869 or you can email sonia at bbc.co.uk. Ian, we have the first victim, sorry, the first caller ready. Great, let's go for the first caller. Caller number one is Rita from Nottingham. Hello, Rita. Hi, Sonia. Hello, welcome to the dream machine. (laughs) What is your question? Mine is, I had a dream and it was in the last few days. I'm combing my hair. Why are you whispering? I'm sorry, I'm whispering. Oh, yes. Right, Are you that? hiding from the police? No. <laughs> <laughs> so who's that scribbling? Is that Ian? No. Yes, it is. I've got my noisy oh. pen with me today, Sonia. Oh, what are you doing? Doodling? No, I'm just <laughs> writing down a few salient <laughs> notes. Will you stop writing I love Sonia on bits of paper again? And we've told you about this before. All right, OK. Yes, sorry about that. <laughs> Rita, what... Oh. Sorry, I, I apologise. What is, what's your short dream? Tell us. Yeah, I'm combing my hair, and one side combs really easily. And I comb the other side, it's all tangled, and I can't get my um, comb through it. That's a great dream, Rita. So one of the things that that happens when we we dream, we, we don't really dream in really obvious ways. We dream in the language of symbols and metaphors. So when you dream about your hair, Rita, you're dreaming about things that come out of your head. So they're usually thoughts and ideas. Mm. So you've got some thoughts and ideas, maybe some plans and projects that you're combing through and you're just trying to make sense of and get them all straightened up so you can actually use them and they look presentable. So one part of that, probably the really rational and objective part, you manage them to do really easily, but you've got some other ideas that you need to use that seem maybe a bit tangled up, a bit messy. There's a few knots need to be sorted out in them. So what your dream is telling you, Rita, what you're actually trying to tell yourself is you've got some idea or thought that you really need to work through a bit more and just think a bit more clearly about it. And as you do that, then it'll start to straighten out and just seem far more presentable to you. Right, OK. OK, Rita. Can I do another quick one? Oh, you're being very greedy, Rita. Is it your birthday? <laughs> Is it your birthday? No, it was in April. Well, we'll allow it as a belated gift. 
Right, OK. I'll do it very quickly. I'm standing in the kitchen and uh -huh. there's a real big storm hurricane outside. There's floods, the water windy. I see a tree uproot itself, fly past my kitchen window and then it all comes into my patio lounge. It's attached to me, it goes into another room. And that was quite scary. OK, Rita, any time you dream about a house, you're dreaming about your own self, because houses have got inside and outside, yeah, and so do we. Yeah, the house I used to live in, not the one I yeah, live in now. Yeah, but that's fine. So, any time you dream about a previous house, it's maybe how you were a while ago. So, it's an identity that you had once, and you've kind of evolved and moved on from. Yeah. So, this is, this is about how you maybe behaved and acted before. When you dream about a kitchen, mm -hmm. then you're dreaming about how you look after yourself and other people, how you nurture and nourish yourself. And if you dream of a storm, anything to do with a storm, particularly if there are flood, floods involved, it's usually to do something emotional. So there's something where you've been trying to nurture something in the past, and it's maybe been in a relationship, but you've been through a big emotional upset through it. So why you're having that dream is that you're just trying to make sure that you look after your own self as well as trying to look after the needs of other people. Right, okay. Right. Not as bad as I thought then. No, no, it's very healthy, Rita. Okay. Thank you very much. Are you sure you haven't got a third one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Rita. Okay, thanks. Take care, bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Ian, there's another yeah. house one here. Um, uh -huh. It's from Sharon. I've always had dreams about my old house. We moved house in 2003, but my dreams include people currently in my life, like my husband, friends, family, but I keep dreaming about the old house. Why is this? Yeah, so this is like Rita's dream. So when Sharon's dreaming about her old house, it's dreaming about how she was and maybe what she felt she could do. So as we go through life, sometimes we feel that we can't do things anymore because our partners will object to it or our family might object to it or we're in different jobs, so we have to show up in particular ways. So Sharon's dreaming about a quality that she used to show a lot more before 2003 and she feels a need to express that quality or that characteristic in her waking right. life now. Now, I had a dream, Ian, that um, you asked for a Manmohan Waris track. Is that true? I and what does it mean? I think that dream is just about to come true, and I think it means you're very perceptive and intelligent, Sonia. Got it. <laughs> Must have talked you with the experts. 11... <laughs> I must say, Ian, you chose very, very well because I do like that track very much. So, yeah. nice one. Yes, yes, it was a very good track. It was. I must, you know, one day we'll go through your CD collection together. Yes, that won't take very long, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Wallace is our dream psychologist expert. He knows all about dreams. He can break them down for you. So get in touch with us if you want your dream analysed and find out what it means. The number to call right now to get through Swiss Live is 08 459 445 08 459 Uh Good luck. We, you can also text 81869. Or email sonia at bbc.co.uk. Are you ready for your next person? Yes, I'm all set. OK. This is Gezer. Is, it Ge is that how I pronounce your name? Gezer. 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 Yeah. Hello, Gezer. OK. Gezer. Gezer. Ho. I'm OK, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, what is your dream? Good morning. It's basically what it is. About three weeks ago, I've been having a dream three three days in a row that I see snakes in the front and on the back someone is trying to stab me. Oh. And I wake up, I'm all sweaty and all the rest. Oh, so there's snakes in front of you. Yeah. But behind you, someone's trying to stab trying you. To stab me. But you do, can you see who's behind you? No, I can't see. I can't turn because I'm only on a small. It's like uh, I'm on a small square. I can't turn either way. And do you keep having I don't this have dream? Any energy in my leg to move my legs as well. Do you keep Do you keep having it? I had it three three days in a row. Three days in a row. Right. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean, Ian? 
Yeah, see, this is a great dream. So although it seems very scary, it's a very, very healthy dream. So what you've been creating for yourself here, anytime we dream about snakes, people have all these different connotations about snakes that are to do with really dangerous things, that are to do with intimacy and sex and all these things. What a snake is about is about transformation. A snake is something that can shed its skin uh, and change, and what's inside, the potential inside, can actually burst out and be there in reality. So when you see these snakes in front of you, Garcia, what you're actually doing is think there's a, there's a possibility for transformation coming up. Someone trying to stab you in the back, that could seem like someone is, has it in for you in some way, but any time we dream about uh, a knife or a gun, it's about being able to use some sort of power and use that power at a distance. So because it's behind you, because it's your back, there's something in the past where you use some personal power or talent to make some sort of transformation. So what you're telling yourself is you have the ability to make this transformation, but you're not quite sure what it is yet. You're standing in a small square, so that seems like you're quite confined. You feel your choices in making this transformation are quite restricted and limited, and you can't move your legs. And not being able to move your legs is a very common dream. Our legs are how we move ourselves independently and energetically through life. So you feel that you can't make the decision to move you forward. So what you're telling yourself is that you need to take one little step, there's something that you need to do to change your circumstances and make this transformation and it won't happen magically, you have to decide this first small step that you're going to take and as soon as you start making that step then you'll step outside the small square and you can actually move forward and transform some situation for yourself Okay Kasser Thanks a lot Thank you, okay. uh, on the next line is Sanjuli from Stratford Hello Sanjuli Hello, hi there, how are you? I'm staff I'm from Stafford. You're from Stafford? Not Stafford. St- Stafford. Anyway, yeah, fine. That's good. <laughs> and what's your dream? Um, I, it's been happening for years now. Married for nine years now. We recently had my ninth anniversary. Congratulations. Um, and uh, thank you. Um, I dream of uh, getting married to someone else. Oh. Stranger. I can't see his face. I don't know who he is. Sometimes, uh, you know... I, it happens, sometimes it's happening, and uh, I wake up very uh, disturbed. Sometimes I start crying in my dreams. In my, in my uh, conscious, I am aware that I am already married. I'm very happy with my husband. I've got a six-year-old boy as well, but I don't know why it keeps on happening. That in your dream, uh, you're marrying somebody else? Yes, I married somebody else. And uh, sometimes, you know, for, for the last few months, it stopped, and recently had the same dream again. Started happening again. Right. Yeah. You're not having an affair, are you? No, no, no way. You sure? I'm sure, 100%. Good time to um, say it now, though. No, 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 no. Why would I say that? I'm quite happy. And I've told my husband about it. He, he just laughs, laughs away, saying that, yes, uh, maybe you're not happy with me. I said, no, that's not the case. We knew each other before marriage, nine years as well, and then we got married, and, and then this, this keeps happening. Do you keep getting this dream where you're marrying a complete story? And this person that you're marrying in your dream, do you know this person? No. Complete stranger. Complete stranger. Some, I, I even don't know the face. I can't even see the face, but I'm just getting married to someone else. Okay, well, that's a very bizarre dream. What does that mean, Ian? Although you think it's a very bizarre dream, Sonia, it's the 59th most common dream that people have. Is it really? Uh, I love how yeah. you know this stuff from the top of your head. It's at 59. Yes. <laughs> 59th. So, Sinjali, what is happening here is any time you dream about getting married, again, because it's coming from your imaginal self and it's not a real thing, you're just dreaming in symbols and metaphors. So we use marriage as a representation of making some sort of commitment and achieving some sort of balance or compromise. So there's something in your waking life recently where you feel that you're having to make some sort of compromise or balance some sort of commitment. Or it's even like when you walk up the aisle, you're having to walk a fine line to make sure that you're managing to look after everyone. So you're trying to make some sort of commitment. Because there's you can't see who you're marrying, you're not quite sure what this commitment fully involves and you don't know all the things that are associated with it. But this is just actually, it might be achieving some sort of work-life balance balance, you might be thinking about going back to work, or there might be something where you're just trying to balance out responsibilities and obligations in your waking life, and you're just working out how to do that in your dream. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. 
Thank you Thank very you. much. I hope, I hope that uh, made some sense to you. And um, I have some more. Right, I want to read out some of these emails and texts I'm getting here. Uh, this says, um, a dream I had recently was when someone was downstairs robbing my house. In particular, they were taking my kitchen cutlery. I ran downstairs and chased them down the streets, but I couldn't run fast enough. In fact, my legs are all stiff somehow. I ended up being in empty school corridors walking around. What does that mean, says Raj? Oh, this is a fantastic dream from Raj. So, any time we dream about a house, uh, we're dreaming about our own self. So, if Raj is dreaming about his own self. When that house is getting robbed, then there's something in waking life where Raj's value isn't being recognised. That value has been stolen away from him somehow. Dreaming about kitchen cutlery. So, we said in Rita's dream that the kitchen's all about how we nurture ourselves. So, cutlery are the tools that we use to nurture ourselves. So Raj's value in being able to look after other people is not being recognised. And again, it's like Gassier's dream, the way he can't move, move his legs and run down the street. He doesn't know what step to take to have that value recognised. So in waking life, he needs to make people aware of how well he looks after them and just take some steps in that direction. Here's another one. This one is about uh, being pregnant. And I bet this is in your top list of hundreds of dreams. This one says, uh, uh, a dream about uh, being pregnant. I tell my mum, the baby's not moving. Um, I don't have children and I've been married for eight years. So what's the significance of this? Yeah, so this is about the 36th most common dream. And any time you dream about being pregnant, it's not really to do with being pregnant in waking life. We have all these words and phrases around pregnancy, things like um, a, a labour of love, um, the fruits of my love and it's to do with uh, having some idea or plan that hasn't come out into the light of day yet but something that's very very precious to the dreamer and they're, they're trying to get that out so the, the fact that she's forgotten about being pregnant or is unsure of it just means that she is unsure of how to get through this gestation period and get this really precious idea out into waking reality. Here's a really I reckon common one, uh, this is from Jagroup who's listening in Norway, so I often dream that I lose my teeth. One by one, they keep falling out. And when I wake up, I can actually taste the blood in my mouth. It's a horrible feeling. And then I get up and look in the mirror to see if all my teeth are there. And they are and everything is OK. Yes, this is very high up in the list of 100 dreams. This is the second most common dream that second? people have. Second? Wow. It's the second most... Yeah, it's quite amazing. So when we dream about our teeth, we, we tend to do two things with their teeth. We tend to show them when we smile or when we snarl. So they're all about confidence and power. So if teeth are falling out one by one, then the dreamer is losing their confidence somehow in waking life. So the message from the dream is just to be more confident and just to smile and show everyone the power and confidence you have. Really? It means you're not feeling mm. very confident. Oh, right. what, just out of curiosity, what's the first most common then? The first most common one is being chased. Oh, yeah. I used to have that one as a child. Do you know that, Ian? I used to have this dream where, like, um, and it was a reoccurring dream that I was sitting at the top of my stairs and all my relatives and my parents and everybody, all my judgy and thai and everybody, would all be socialising downstairs and that there was this Dracula-type figure that was coming towards me, like a scary figure, and, and would almost be saying, go on then, scream. And I'd be trying to scream and nothing would be coming out. And I'd be like going... Ah! And nothing would be no no a vase no voice Ian. Um, I hope you're getting on with your Hindi lessons there. Nothing yes. would be nothing would be coming out of my mouth, and it was really horrible. My dream would always end just as that strange-looking, scary man that looked like Dracula was approaching me. And my producer Gub says he used to have exactly the same dream. Wow! And it was how ET. Old? That's even worse. ET was coming towards you. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. And <laughs> how old were you when you were having that dream? Well, mine was when I was a kid, but I think Gubbs was last week. So, <laughs> 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 so what does it mean? So when uh, we dream about being chased, then there's something that we really want to do in waking life. There's something that we want to pursue ourselves. And if you've been chased by Dracula, then this is the 57th most common dream that people have been pursued. <laughs> Get off! By. Are you winding no, me up? Seriously? No, but being pursued by it's usually um, Dracula, werewolves, or zombies. And if you're being pursued by a vampire, then it suggests that you feel that your energy is 
being unhealthily drained somehow. So it's maybe as a child you didn't uh, have enough time for yourself or you're always having to do things for other people or it could be around family commitments. So you were just feeling a bit drained of energy sometimes. Well, let's be honest, it was in the days when your dad would bring home 15 blokes that you'd never seen from the pub and then you'd have to help your mum make the roti. It's exactly what was happening there for you, Sonia. But Gubb says he never helped with the ruddy, and that never happened in his house. So, mm, what could that mean? So, he's being chased by E.T. Yes. Yeah, Does so E.T. figure in your list of 100 top dreams? It's uh, actually in there. I'm just looking through my book of the top 100 dreams. Yes. And it's uh, the 85th most common dream is anything to do with aliens. So oh. in, in Gub's dream, there's something that he's been having to do that's a bit alien to him. And he, because E.T. is quite magical, he knows that when he actually works out how to do this, then it'll be quite a magical experience. So doing your homework, Gubbs? Is it... <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Eleven thirty-eight. Thank you very much, Ian, for that. Um, right, we've got your next song selection here. You also liked Shreya Ghoshal. That's absolutely right, Sonia. Oh, I've got a nice track here for you as well. Then <laughs> enjoy this, and uh, and then we'll come back with some more. You're listening to the BBC Asian Network. It's Sonia. Evening from ten on BBC Asian Network. Right, we're going to crack on with some more questions from you because we're getting loads that have come in. For our dream expert, a regular on this show, dream psychologist Ian Wallace. Um, Ian, the next question is coming in from Sam in Leicester. Hello, Sam. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Sam. Hello. How are you? Uh, yes, I'm not too bad. Uh, just I wanted to ask a couple of questions to Ian uh, about my dreams. Yes, okay, please. Sam. Yeah. So, you know, I get really, really weird dreams. Like, uh, and this is going on for a long, long time. And uh, I, I, it is always about water, that I'm surrounded by water all the time. And sometimes I'm just standing on a place where it's only one foot by one foot square place, dry place where I'm standing around me. Miles and miles, I just see those. Uh, Talk a bit louder for us, Sam. Beg your pardon? Talk a bit louder. Ucha bolo, ucha. Uchi bolo, Sam. Hello. Uchi bolo. Hello. Hello, Sam. Yes, carry on. Yeah, I think uh, it's a disturbance here. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? I, we can hear you now, Sam, yes, yeah, clearly. Yeah. So I was talking about my dream that, you know, I, uh, sometimes I get dreams, and which is for years and years like that, that, you know, I'm surrounded by water. And miles and miles everywhere, it's only water and water, and there is no way out. Okay, Sam, this is a, a, a very common dream. So we say that when we dream, then we use all these symbols and metaphors from our own imagination. So any time we dream about water, we're dreaming about our emotions and feelings. Because in the same way that water flows and ebbs, then so do our emotions and how we feel. So what's happening in your dream, Sam, is that sometimes you feel absolutely surrounded by your emotions and you're trying to work out how to do something because you're responding very instinctively and emotionally to it. So the message from you that you're sending to yourself is in waking life, when you feel a bit overwhelmed by something, then what you have to do is just to try and be as rational and logical and just work through the various choices open to you. And as you do that, then that little patch of land you're standing on will start to spread out and give you some firm footing to move from. Oh, I see. All right. And is it all right to speak about my other dream as well? Oh, what's your other dream, Sam? It's just like, uh, you know, sometimes I get a dream that, you know, I'm running and someone is uh, just without any reason, I'm running. And, so, and sometimes I feel that someone is following me. But I, although I try to run fast, I can't run. And I, although I'm making all the effort, I'm not moving from there at all. 
Okay, Sam, this is like Gassier's dream from earlier about not being able to move your legs, and this is a, a very common dream where you feel stuck somehow. So what our legs represent in a dream is how we actually move ourselves forward. And usually in the dream you'll find yourself, it's like your legs are stuck to the ground, but your body's leaning forward, so your head's in front of your legs. And that means you may have lots of ideas about how to move forward and do some things you want to do in life, but again, you need to just to take some simple steps to move yourself forward and it may be that you feel emotionally overwhelmed like in your other dream with that so you just have to stand back and reflect on things and make some cool logical choices about what you want to do okay Sam All right, see thanks very much thank you so much thank you Sam thank you. have thank a you. lovely bye. day bye 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 um who's it? is this Ifa it's Ifa 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 Right, hello, Ether. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? <laughs> We've changed your name three times. I'm fine. Uh, right, what did you want to say? Um, I've ha- I had this dream quite a while back now when I actually sat in a spare room of my family home. And um, in this dream, I was asleep in the same room. And this man opened the door of the spare room. And he was quite a distinct man, and he was wearing dark clothing. He had long, dark hair, and his eyes were very, very dark. And he was coming towards me, and this man um, filled me with fear. And I don't know whether I did it subconsciously. I changed, I, I moved, so I, sl- I, I moved my body to the other side, so I was facing the other way, um, thinking in my head, oh, this is a bad dream. And he came to the other side, and I was absolutely petrified. And I actually ran out of my room, came, I, I, I woke up, went into my parents' room screaming. And I thought it was a one-off. And it only happened when I was in that room. And lately, that same man has been coming back into the dream. But this time he seems to be coming closer and closer. And there have been times when I've woken up because I feel that he's invading my actual personal space. And it's quite scary because I'm not someone that gets really terrified by bad dreams. I don't get them very often. I don't get scared easily. But this one man keeps coming closer and closer um, into my personal space. And I seem to be waking up every single time before what, he comes what, and touches me. What does this mean? Who is this strange man that keeps coming in Ether's dream? What does it uh, represent, Ian? Ether, thank you so much for this. This is such a, a lovely dream to have, although it seems really, really scary. This is a Doesn't really... Doesn't sound lovely, Ian. <laughs> no, just bear with me, Sonia. Let's do this as a team. OK. So, so Ether, when you um, have this dream, it's a, it's a classic episode of what we call a, a night terror. So it's um, what's happening in the dream, you're in this state which is called a hypnopompic state and it's kind of between sleeping and waking. So anytime you dream about a house, you're dreaming about yourself. In this spare room is your spare capacity and spare potential. And the man that comes in, anytime we dream about a man, whether we're a man or a woman in waking life, we're dreaming about things like our ambition, our ability to assert ourselves, our drive and so on. So there's some potential that you have that you really need to assert in some way. And because the man is quite dark, then this is something that's still quite hidden to you. It's quite unconscious. And he's getting closer and closer. And that seems quite scary, but you have the fact that it's a really positive dream. But the thing that makes it really special, Ether, is that the other side of night terrors is something called lucid dreaming, where you can actually become aware that you're dreaming and start to control your dream. So although it's really scary when this happens to you, Ether, the thing to do, the next time this character starts to approach you, just be really, really brave, and I know it'll be very hard to do, just turn round and say to him, who are you and what do you need? Who are you and what do you need? And you'll usually get a reply about what aspect of your own character it is and what you need to do in waking life. Well, All right, it's okay. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for for getting in touch with us. Right, Ian, the mission is that we only have you now for the next five minutes okay so you have to speed through these as much as quickly as you can i'm gonna gonna throw these at you are you ready it's gonna be like speed dating but we speed dreaming absolutely Ian. like this one now sounds more like a nightmare to me than a dream uh from an anonymous person who says i had a dream of my ex i was ecstatic to see him we talk and we spend time together with each other uh, but he tells me he can't see me and then I get very upset and feelings of unrequited love overwhelm me what does this mean? 
Any time we dream about anyone else, then we're dreaming about part of our own self. When we dream about an ex-lover, which is the 15th most common dream that people have, there's some quality that lo that lover had that we were very, very drawn to, uh, and we're starting to realise in our own self now. So whatever quality that Anon wanted in that dream, in that person, then she's been drawn to it and she needs to express it herself. Um, what, what does it mean when you dream about past uh, pe people who've passed away, loved ones appearing in your dreams, says this one? I, often, it's a very Asian thing to think that there, it is actually your loved one passing on a message to you. Do you say that it is? That can be one view or perspective around it. It's the 20th most common dream that people have, encountering a dead loved one. Again, when you dream about that loved one, there's some quality that they had that you really want to embody yourself now. Maybe they were very warm and wise, and it's time for you to show your own warmth and wisdom. Um, Jay says, I had a dream that a cat stole my keys and then ran out in revenge because I killed a bird. <sighs> Fantastic dream. So anytime we dream about a cat, we're dreaming about our own independence and autonomy. And anytime we dream about a bird, we're dreaming about thoughts and ideas. So for Jay, having some independence and autonomy of choice is the key for her to achieve some of her ideas and plans. All right, OK. Um, this one. Oh, I've got so many here. I've got so many. Uh, swimming. Swimming in the sea. Water everywhere. Even though I don't know how to swim. What's Jyoti says, what's the meaning of this? OK, this is like Sam's dream with all the water. So any time we dream of swimming, then we're somehow immersed in our own emotions and feelings. And even though the person doesn't know how to swim in waking life, they know how to navigate their own emotions and feelings and be ha quite happy being immersed in them. Sonu had a dream that a dog bit Sonu. Any time we dream about a dog, we're dreaming about our own ability to give unconditional love and affection. So if we dream of being bitten by a dog, there's some situation in waking life where we're giving unconditional love and affection to someone and it's not coming back and we feel that we're being bitten by it. Johnny seems very worried. Johnny says, I had a dream about selling my house. Because what does that mean? Because I love my house very much. <laughs> When we dream about a house, we're dreaming about our own self, so Johnny's dreaming about some sort of identity that he feels he has to let go, probably to fit into maybe a, a new job or a, a peer group or fit in with a social circle. I love this one, only because it just made me laugh. This one said, I, ha I keep getting dreams about my brother-in-law, that we're lovers and that we're planning to get married. <laughs> what does this mean? That's come from Wolverhampton. <laughs> what does that mean? It's the 52nd most common dream, inappropriate intimacy. So again, when we dream about someone else, we're dreaming about That's some aspect awful. of it. I, th I reckon everyone's had a dream where they've been getting close to somebody that they would never get close to in a million years in real life, for whatever reason. And that's... So any time you have that sort of dream, there's something that you're becoming intimately aware of in your own self. So some characteristic that you're starting to realise you, you have and you want to get closer to. Hey, what does it mean? It means what? That you're wanting to get close to them? No, 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 no. no. Right, let's just go back a bit, Sonia. So when you dream about someone else, you're dreaming about some aspect of your own self. It's nothing to do with the person you're dreaming about, apart from the fact that they represent some quality that you've been really drawn to. Oh. And you're starting to become aware that you possess that quality you're Yourself, and you want to become a bit more intimate with your own quality, because nothing to do with them. You know how embarrassing it is when you have a dream about like getting, you know, and then, then you have to see that person in real life and you don't have that feeling for them. Yeah, and I guess you just have to rationalise it through your dreams. Like it's nothing to do with them. This is all about me, me, me. Suki says, what does it mean if you dream of falling? Yeah, this is a really common dream, Suki. It's the seventh most common dream that people have, and it means there's some situation in waking life where you just need to relax your grip, let go a bit, stop micromanaging things, and just take it easy. Uh, Mina says, what is this? I keep getting this dream. It's reoccurring. Uh, I dream that I'm on a plane, and the plane gets blown up or hijacked, and I dream about airports and flying. <sighs> This is the 16th most common dream that people have, something going wow. on with an aeroplane. So any time we dream about a plane, a plane is a vehicle of the air. The air represents our thoughts and ideas. So there's some 
idea or plan that Mina has and it keeps getting hijacked or destroyed in some way. So the message from the dream that Mina's sending herself is just to be more practical, stop having these high-flying flights of fancy and just take some practical actions to make stuff happen for herself. I love this show, can I just say. I love our listeners. Every day they make me smile. Genuinely, they do. We're going to end with this one. I apologise to everybody else. We just haven't got enough time. But we end with this one. Bobby from Leeds, who called in. Bobby says his dream is he's walking home from work all alone and the sky is covered in disco lights. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. So in, in Bobby's dream, any time we dream about our work, then we're dreaming about our value. Does that just mean actually... Bobby's just had a few too many? No, not at all. I mean, it may have broken down some inhibitions from him, but when he sees the sky full of disco lights, it means that in his work environment, he needs to be a bit more playful and express his real talents and just start dancing around some of the problems he's facing. Oh, <laughs> that's a great dream, isn't it? It's fabulous. Oh, right. OK, well, listen, Ian, it's been fabulous having you on the show. We're out of time. And where can people get in touch with you? I know you're on Twitter, aren't you? Yes, I am. Twitter, at Ian Wallace. Very simple, Sonia. Ian Wallace, and, yeah. Somebody called uh, you Dave uh, on text, but it is Ian Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also go to my website, ianwallacedreams.com. And if you want to check out how I know the numbers of all these dreams and how common they are, then you can check out my book, The Top 100 Dreams, the dreams that we all have and what they really mean. Brilliant. Ian Wallace, I'm missing you already.